Hi guys, Alicia here, the Newbie Crafter. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super adorable bookmarks using simple supplies that you most likely have in your craft room and I'm going to be showing you alternatives if you do not have those specific supplies. So to get started, I am going to be using some Recollections cardstock for the, these bookmarks that I'm going to be making in the video. I am going to be using the Feathered Greens cardstock paper. It's just a set of green, it's by Recollections. It's 65 pounds, but whatever cardstock you have in a variety of colors, variety of shades in that color, will work just fine. So I have already, I already have some right here pre cut, but I am going to need four, so I'm going to cut one more. And we're cutting these down to an inch and a quarter. So I'm lining that up. I'm taking my ruler, lining my ruler up with the inch and a quarter. And I'm going to grab a craft knife and cut it. Now if you don't have a craft knife, you can use a old kitchen knife, like a paring knife, or craft knives aren't that expensive, so it's pretty easy to go out and find one. So I have my four strips of in a variety of shades, and I am going to take those and some of these really skinny little white paper strips that I have. These are from when I made myself some envelopes last. I use I make mine with the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board, and I keep all the scraps because I can use these little guys for this. I'm going to be using that and some other scraps, which are also from my punch board. And I have cut these scraps down to a 2 inch width. So now line this up here, it's 2 inches. And we're going to be cutting this off here, but it's just easier to wait to cut off the length. So I'm going to start out with just one of these to start. And some of this double sided tape. This isn't really tacky. So if I place something in the wrong place, I can easily peel it up. And I'm placing two strips on here just along the edges. But this does stick well enough on here that my bookmark will not fall apart. I'm just gonna drop those into the garbage as I work here. If you have really big ones, I recommend saving those. Like if you're using a really big roll of double sided tape like this, crazy big, it is about six and a half inches. Um, just keep those scraps because you can use those in other projects and I'll probably have some of those projects coming up in my channel. So I'm going to start out with the lightest color right here and I'm going to line this up along the top right there and then I'm going to put one of the white paint strips in between. So after this, I am just going to do all the colors all the way down. So what inspired me to do this is there were a lot of different projects that people were doing on YouTube using paint strips, and they all went out to the hardware store and they just bought them. Well, they took them. You don't even buy the paint samples. And I was kind of thinking, they might notice something suspicious if I go in. I take one of every color and that's not the purpose of them so that isn't really the nicest thing to do. So I wanted to make up some of my own and share it with all of you just so that you don't feel quite so bad taking their supplies because that is for them to make sales with, it's not for us to do crafts with when we can even create it ourselves right here. So I feel a lot better doing it this way than going to the hardware store and taking a bunch of theirs. So at this point I'm going to flip it over and you can see I have all my colors lined up here and my other strips. I'm going to need a total of three so you can get a total of four bookmarks out of one eight and a half by eleven width of cardstock. And I'm going to use my double sided tape again and I'm just going to do this one at a, a time. I'm going to apply it onto my paper this time instead my strips of paper instead of my bookmark bases, I guess you could call them. So I'm going to apply one strip and then move over a bit and do the second. 
it's okay to have some overhang. I can cut that off after. I'm going to peel it up. And stick down my next piece. And I'm putting this right up against beside it. And I'm just going to run my craft knife along there after. So I'm turning these into bookmarks today. But I'm hoping to come up with some other things that you can do with these. If I don't, or if you want to, just go ahead and look up paint chip or paint sample DIYs. And there are <laughs> pages and pages of them. And a lot of those are fun to do, and you can make them and not steal from the hardware store. I wouldn't really call it stealing, but taking, I guess. And for my last one, just tearing the strip. Now when I first did these, I would do it like one. One of these, I'd tape on one of these, I'd line up all my papers, and then I would cut it all out and everything. But this method here, I get four of them in about the same amount of time. It is just so crazy easier. But you can, if you only want one, you can do it that way too. They're both good ways to do it. But if you're mass producing them, like I am, just go ahead and do it this way. And if you want yours to be a little more durable, you can use a stronger double-sided tape. The one I'm just using is from a local dollar store. And I got three rolls for a dollar or something. I have quite a few of those rolls. There's not that much on them, though. So Now, along the edges, I'm going to use my craft knife just to avoid getting my scissors all gunky and ucky. I'm just going to cut off all of my tape along here. Okay, so now I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to cut off these extra little bits along here. Okay, don't cut the ruler, cut the paper. There we go, and I'm just going to throw these guys out. I'm not going to worry about keeping these. I know I try not to throw things out, but there's no point in keeping those. And then I'm going to cut off, thankfully that did not fall on my foot, cut off this white excess here. And these all have some tapey gunk on them, so I could cut those, the tapey gunk off and save them, but since there's all the tape on here, I'm just going to throw those out. Then I'm going to flip this over, and you can use your ruler, but I trust myself with my craft knife. And I'm just placing the craft knife in between the little grooves of these white pieces of paper. And I am going to slice down. Apply a fair amount of pressure because I don't want to have to go over this twice, and I'm cutting through tape and two layers of cardstock, all the way I'm going over it twice. There we go. And I'm going to do this all the way along, like so. And we have all of our paint chips right here. I always think they should go lightest to darkest, not darkest to lightest. That's my personal preference. It's totally up to you. So I'm next going to take my clear tape, this is crystal clear tape. It was like a dollar or two dollars a roll. Really cheap. And you can either take them and line them all up and put the tape across and cut them out. But my tape is just a little on the skinny side and I'm okay with just a little bit of my paper showing over the edge. So I'm just going to apply one strip and call it good. with my scissors there and now flip this over and stick it 
down the tube again. And, and then I'm just going to use my bone folder to smooth out any of those creases. And flatten everything down all the way. If you don't have this, you can use a spoon from the kitchen. But I have one of these, so I'm going to use it. Cut off the excess. I know this is optional, but it just makes it a little more durable over time because I per personally am really, really rough on my bookmarks. Probably more rough than I should be. But I find that covering them in tape really helps and using cardstock rather than paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to these three right here. So now I have applied tape to each and every one of these. And for my next step, I like to take a hole puncher. You can use your crocodile or just an old fashioned hole punch like I have. You can get them by the scrapbook companies or you can get them at the hard at the office supply store. And just I kind of eyeball the middle. Don't put it down too far. It looks slightly awkward. So just go along and punch. Just don't go too high up or your bookmark is kind of ruined. So I have punched each and every one of these. And on my other ones I used some of these glitter tapes, but these are a pain to peel and I don't really want to have to deal with that on video. So I have, these are stick on ribbons I got from Michaels. Yes, Michaels. And I'm just going to peel this up and I'm going to stick it along the edge of one of these. Just lining it up. And it's like ribbon with adhesive on the back. I used this in my shaker card tutorial, the first video I ever made. Lost my other pair of scissors, so I'll just use these. And I have found that they've come in handy. I would probably buy them again, but I have not seen them. So I cannot buy them again because they don't have them anymore. But you can just apply adhesive on the back of regular ribbon for the same effect. Um, another thing that I wanted to use was this ribbon right here. It is, it was in the same area. It's called Fabulous Finds Adhesive Trim. And it was three yards for a dollar twenty-five, and it's just these little cute sequins. So I'm going to grab another one of these, and I'm going to apply that along the edge again. I've never actually tried to cut through one of these sequins. I've always cut in between them, so we'll see if I have to attempt to cut through them at all today. And this, there we go. That will be interesting if I have to. I don't have my good scissors with me. And I think I have to. Let's see how this works out. I'm okay, I didn't actually have to. It was just looked like I had to. So I have two done. You could save these for another project, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Another thing that you can use that I just leaked up to get are little sequins or stickers. So those are both good options. These sequins here are from the dollar store. I love these ones. And just lighting those up. That done, and I like to add some ribbon to the tops of mine. I have a collection, an assortment of ribbon here that I like, and I like to use 12 inch lengths of it best. This is 11, this is 10 and a half, but it's close enough to 12 for me. That's how picky I am. <laughs> and poke that through, and loop it up. So if you want to, you could add beads onto the ends of these, but I am choosing not to. I'm just going to cut these ends on an angle so that they look really nice. 
That's a bad angle. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I have that one done. And I think this looks okay. 12 inches. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time.